All right, Dean, the aid just keeps on coming for Ukraine, at least from this country where President Biden has a, a, a promised advanced weapon systems for Ukraine. In case you're counting now, it's about $41, $42 billion in all, more than half of that military aid. But other countries, certainly among NATO countries and Western powers, they're dialing things back a little bit, concerned that the longer this drags on and the more weaponry and monies are provided, uh, the deeper this gets. That is something that Mike Pompeo, the former U.S. Secretary of State, was telling me would be a huge mistake. Take a look. Well, this is a European challenge, right? The confrontation is in Europe. We talk about Russia and Ukraine, but this is this is Vladimir Putin attacking Europe. Mm -hmm. And the Europeans should be front and center. They should be leading not only in terms of the money and weapon systems, but also uh, in the central understanding that you have to deter someone like Vladimir Putin. This isn't about this isn't about prolonging this so the Ukrainians can continue to fight. This is about convincing Vladimir Putin that he has to stop the atrocities he's engaged in. And so uh, when I see this fracturing uh, on economic issues that right. we've talked about, you and I think before, uh, it's very disconcerting because in the end, this ought to be European led. Will, will America always be at the front of these kinds of things just because of the nature of our exceptional country? But make no mistake about it. When you see that fracturing, Vladimir Putin sees it too. Yeah, I'm wondering if we're wearing him out or he's wearing us <laughs> out. And I'm talking collectively about the West and NATO in general, um, that some members fear the longer and deeper we get involved, the more of a mess this becomes and all the monies involved get to be a drain. You've even seen a uh, secretary in our country with people wondering, all right, with all the billions we're spending here, why not allocate those funds for better school safety in light of these shootings, what have you. How do you answer that? Yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, in my judgment. In the, in the end, uh, we need to make sure that the money gets to where it's going. I think some of the concern has been, hey, $70 billion, you're going to give it to them over a matter of weeks or months. How the heck are they going to process right, you? Right. Will it get where you intend for the intended purposes that you're, uh, you're seeking? Second, uh, we need to do the hard work to deter Vladimir Putin. I've heard folks talking about an off-ramp. Uh, Vladimir Putin no more wants an off-ramp in this thing than a man in the moon. He, is, he's, he has been determined to extend Russia, call it Greater Russia, call it the resurrection so of the Soviet Union. you think his overtures, this off-ramp, where he talks about ease up on sanctions yeah. for me and I'll provide, you know, a safety for food getting out of the country and aid coming into the country. You just don't buy it. I, I don't buy it. At, at best, he might stop for a moment. The guns might fall silent for a week or a month. But Vladimir Putin's had this theory of the case for 20 years. What it took for our four years was we convinced him that the cost was too high, right? This is about the perception of cost to the decision maker, Vladimir Putin in this case. And his perception of cost as a matter of fact was that he didn't do it during our four years. That's what we need to do. We need to convince him that his cost is too high and that we are determined. That's why you opened with the fracture. That's what that's the real risk. Uh, yeah. Not only that you see Europe fracture, but cascading crisis as well across the world. Right. Chairman Kim's watching. The Ayatollah's watching. Everyone's watching to see if the West is prepared to defend the things that they've claimed they were prepared to defend. You know, you mentioned China's watching and I'm, I'm thinking of this whole new surveillance of Taiwan and whether that's provocative and whether they that is China and Russia are seizing on what could be a blinking moment on the part of the West, not all the West and not all of NATO, but but that they see something like that. Yeah. Three ideas. This is why you have friends in the world, right? So think of Asia. We think was the United States come to defend Taiwan. The most important thing the Chinese Communist Party should see is that Japan, South Korea, the Australians, uh, folks in other parts of Southeast Asia are determined together to push back against them. We'll, we'll provide the support. But we'll do be you there. think China would seriously even get this provocative, invade Taiwan with this backdrop, that it looks at the economic measures we've taken against Russia and says, there, but by the grace of God, go we, that, so that, that this is not a likely threat. I actually think it's just the converse of that, Neil. Really? Okay. I actually think they see that the ruble today is higher than it was when this adventure began, and they say that the West isn't serious about putting sanctions but on But everything the, else is a disaster. Uh, right? Yeah, we don't have stuff on the shelves in America, too. I mean, Good the point. global supply chain is a mess, the global economy. Uh, Russians probably in, in worse condition today than it was on February 24th as a domestic economic matter. But I think what Xi Jinping actually sees is that the West clutch 
stretched out, that it didn't actually sanction all of the Russian banks. And if they're not going to do that to Russia, the 15th, 16th largest economy in the world, the chance that they're going to do that with the Chinese Communist Party and with China, where we're much more interconnected, our economy depends much more on uh, the Chinese government continuing to have its economic functionality. I think he sees that as a green light from an economic perspective. I don't think for a second he believes the Biden administration will impose serious sanctions or for that matter, that the world, the world would put serious sanctions on his party. Do you ever wonder why Putin keeps doing what he's doing? The talks that he's you know, dealing with the illness, maybe cancer, that he's in a world of hurt, um, that he's facing a mutiny among top generals in the military. They're just not, you know, leaving a yeah. mass, uh, but, but that his hold on power is tenuous. Do you buy that? I don't. I do. I do wonder why he keeps doing this. But that's a rationality. There's no exit ramp for him, right? Now. No, I, I think that's right. So he has to stay. We we apply a rationality yeah. in the West to these leaders that just doesn't exist. That there's one thing I saw a CIA director reading about these people, their personality characters, is that they don't value humanity. In the same. we think about goodness gracious, you lost 15,000 soldiers, 25,000 soldiers. We lose two, and America is sad. We we all see that, and we see the flags coming back to Dover. That doesn't happen in Russia. That's not the value set that Vladimir Putin applies. But they can see everything else, right? They can Uh, see the long bank lines, the empty shelves. Do they they peg any of this to what he's doing? uh, He's telling them the story. The the, the Russian Orthodox Church that many of them are members of is telling them a very interesting story about the greater Russia and the imperialism of the West. he's a hero. Uh, I don't know if he's a hero, and maybe this won't last, but there's no doubt the perception of Vladimir Putin inside of his country is very different than the one that you and I and ordinary Americans would have. Um, you know, you, you've served in a position at tightly of security because of your serving in that position from some of the biggest rogues on the planet, and it's a real and constant threat after leaving office for you. I'm just wondering, do you look at that and say it wasn't worth it? Do you look at it and say... What the hell was I thinking? No, Neil, Susan and I are feel like we were so privileged to get a chance to serve America for four years. We didn't get it right every day, but we went at it hard and with seriousness and with the love of this country in our hearts. I don't regret a single minute of it. I wouldn't change a thing. And in fact, I only had a thousand days as Secretary of State. I wish I'd have had a handful more weeks. Um, the, the White House comes up. Your name is always on a short list of Republicans entertaining that. Uh, you always gracefully poo-poo <laughs> the question, but I, I don't gracefully stop asking <laughs> it. So what about that? I, I know you're focused on the midterms, but 2024 is shaping up to be a pretty interesting battle. Are you interested in the White House? You know, I'm always up for a good fight. I don't know how this uh, progresses for Susan and me. We'll think, we'll pray, we'll work, and we but will. But any of your own security issues that you've dealt uh, with, well, that, would that entertain? Won't, won't be part of the calculation. The calculation will be pretty straightforward. Do we believe that this is the right place for us to go serve our country? Do we think we'd be a good leader or whatever position it is we are, we are pursuing? Uh, we've always found this place to serve. We'll keep doing that. That'll be our focus. And if we think so, we'll go take a run at it and convince the good people of Iowa and New Hampshire that we're the, we're the, we're the right people. And if not, uh, we'll make sure that whoever it is is putting themselves forward. We'll help them, whether, him or her. Whether your old boss runs or not, uh, would that enter the equation? Nah, it's just it's just about do you think you're the right person? It's pretty it's a pretty straightforward to decide that you're going to put yourself forward to be president of the United States or for that matter, governor of Kansas or wherever. But you wouldn't base it on whether Donald Trump or running nah, it's again. Just, it's, it's simply about do you think you're the right person? If you do, you have an obligation to get after it. Have you talked to the former president? Yeah, I, I haven't talked to him in a little bit, but I we communicate all the time. You have good relations now. There was a little bit for, of... for four years. For four years, I stayed there. Five secretaries That's of defense, right. four national security but advisors. Since, since. Just me. Oh, yeah. No, still, okay. still since. Yeah, still stay in touch with him. OK, yeah. so in the Georgia race, and everything else, whereas that, that Trump bump didn't, didn't pan out the way it has in other states. Do you think that's a reflection that he's lost some oomph within the party? No, I, I still think he has an important place inside the conservative movement and the Republican Party and that his ideas are going to be lasting. But, Neil, I do always think, uh, you asked about me, you asked about yeah. President Trump. It's never about me or any other person. It's always, for me, it's always about these ideas that made America great. And so... Uh, 
uh, this exceptional country needs another 250 good years. The world needs us to have another 250 good years. And so we shouldn't focus on the personalities. We should focus on the ideas and then find the right person or people to go carry those banners forward. But we do focus on the personalities. That yeah, has you, a lot you, to do with it. You have to have elections and we can go, we should go fight over the ideas. And when we do that, this country is in a really darn good place. Secretary Pompeo, great seeing you again. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Be well.